Yo, what is going on guys? Will Morris here bringing you guys a brand new Busch Gardens video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Busch Gardens Tampa. Now, this is probably a video I should have done last year right after I went to Busch Gardens Tampa. And I just never got around to it. And so that's what we're going to do today. Now, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that do do this in a more formal way. This isn't that. You know me. You know how to do these videos. This isn't structured. I'm just sitting here and I'm going to talk. I'm just going to kind of go through it as I think about the parks. This this is my opinion. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Like I said, I've only been to Busch Gardens Tampa once, and I've been to Busch Gardens Williamsburg a lot. You know, there's a little bit of bias in some of my opinions. I'm not saying it's right, but if you want to hear my point of view on the two parks, this is the place to be. Before we jump into this video, I want to give a shout out to one of the team members from Busch Gardens Williamsburg. There was a team member at Busch Gardens Williamsburg working in a booth at Griffin. He called down to the team members that were on the floor to let me know that he watches my videos. And if you're watching this, I appreciate you. Appreciate you watching the videos here on the channel. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, you're doing great up in the booth the other day, by the way. So... Yeah, keep it up. All right, now let's get into the video. So a little background on Busch Gardens Tampa. Tampa opened before Williamsburg did, and it is based on Africa, not Europe. The one thing that really stands out about Tampa, and this is not necessarily a good thing, it's more just like something that stands out, is it doesn't disconnect you from the world around you. It's kind of in a street corner. You're just driving through like the city of Tampa, kind of like in like this uh, smaller part of the city, and you just kind of stumble upon it, and you're like, oh, it's here. Okay, and you go to parking, which is, parking is, it's a pain, which I mean, Williamsburg parking is not the greatest either. It's a trend. You go into the park and then you're like, okay, I'm vibing with this. You go through the entrance and you're like, okay. It is very weird because going to Williamsburg your whole life, you have a very structured way of what going into Busch Gardens is like. So going into this world where the colors are so much different, the music is so much different, the atmosphere is so much different. It's weird seeing similar signage with the different atmosphere, but that's not really a, co a compare and contrast thing. It was just, it's kind of jarring. It was kind of jarring in that first moment. But one thing you really notice is you can hear the outside world and you can see the outside world. Now, Williamsburg, yes, you can, but mostly what you will see, the parking lots, the James River, and the anheuser Bush factory. So in my opinion, you're not really seeing a whole lot of the outside world. You see a little bit of some apartment complexes, a little bit. Don't think it really takes you out of the real world. Whereas walking in Tampa through the park, and it was like you go left when you first go in, you go through Iron Gwazi and you go around, and you're seeing billboards. And you can hear the traffic going by. Now Disney has a very similar thing where they are right kind of in the street corner and kind of positioned in a way. But what they did is they built the berm, so they disconnected them. You don't see and you don't really hear the outside world. And that's what a really cool thing. I think Tampa could have benefited from that. There was like a Burger King thing right there. And I was like, I can see the outside world. I don't, I don't, I don't say love that because not even just Busch Gardens, Williamsburg, but you think about the Disney parks, the Universal parks. When you're in that park, it kind of envelops you and it kind of sucks you into where you're like, I'm in this world for however long I'm here. And you only see bits and pieces of the outside world. But at Tampa, you see a lot of it. And I remember riding Montu, and then when you hit the brake run, waiting to, waiting to go back to the station, I'm looking at the street. I can see people walking up and down the street, you know, cars going up and down. And it's just that element that kind of pulls you out of the immersive experience that you expect to have in the parks. And when you go to Williamsburg, the trees, the nature, the way that Busch Gardens is built into the land where you have the river and you go into the dips and everything, it does such a good job that when you're in there, you are disconnected which I think is an absolutely beautiful thing about Williamsburg that I think is definitely better than Tampa. Now, one thing that Tampa has, and I mentioned it in my Busch Gardens Tampa vlog last year, and I always said I pray this doesn't happen to Williamsburg, and we slightly see it now, and I hope it doesn't just keep spreading the outside world seeping its way in, by which in Tampa there is a Chick-fil-A. There's a Chick-fil-A in the middle of the park. I don't love that. I have always been a big fan of Busch Gardens having homemade food. You know, they get the ingredients and make the food in the park. Now, I understand some of you might come at me saying, have you eaten at Busch Gardens Williamsburg in the last couple of years? Yes. But ever since the past couple of years, situations in the world, getting some ingredients in is kind of hard. And prices on certain ingredients is, you know, astronomical due to other things in the outside world. So it has kind of made a compound effect to where we are still in the way that Busch Gardens makes a lot of homemade stuff. Like, I mean, let's be honest here. But yes, there has been some effects 
because of some things going on in the world. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Chick-fil-A. It was kind of jarring. Now, you guys like their Starbucks and Bush Gardens Williams Park. Yeah, but Starbucks is Starbucks. Starbucks is coffee. Like, so I don't have any problem with Starbucks being at the park because that's it's not like in your face. It's just kind of there. But Williamsburg has added an out-of-market place known as Rita's in Fessa Italia, which is the new ice cream shop that replaced Italian Freeze. Now, I was really upset about this because they got rid of the pineapple Dole Whip. That is now in England. I had one the other day, again, and it is so good. But, you know, ice cream shops, kind of like Starbucks, where it's not like a full restaurant, because full restaurant is where we're going to, where I kind of have an issue. So, hopefully, Rita's is as far as we go. Here's a little hitch about Busch Gardens Tampa that I'm going to put a little asterisk on this as we go in this video. A lot of food places were closed the day we were there. We were going to, I guess, their version closest to Trapper Smokehouse. It was over by Shikra. We were really excited to eat there, and it was closed, and a couple other food options were closed. We ended up eating at just kind of one of those quick grab-and-go food places, and I got like chicken tenders and fries. When it comes to the food aspect, I really can't talk too much on that at Bush Gardens Tampa. I don't want to speak on it without actually eating at some of their real restaurants. Like I said, the only thing I can really speak to is them having a Chick-fil-A there, which wasn't great. But food-wise, can't give a full like thought on that. When it comes to park operations, now this is talking about, in my opinion, how quick you're getting in and out of the rides. Now, there were a lot of rides that day that were having some downtime and some problems. Kumba wasn't open, which is really sad because, you know, I was excited to ride Kumba. A lot of rides were having some downtime that day, which is, if you go to Williamsburg, we got it too. I'm looking at you, Pantheon and Dark Coaster. And recently, Griffin, for some reason. And Apollo Chariot. Don't know why. But I say, like, once when the rides were going, their operations were pretty quick. Because I was thinking about it. I say their their operations were just fine. Like, I wasn't like, oh, my goodness, this is taking forever. Now, I will say, from my opinion, from going to Bush Gardens Williamsburg a lot this year, their operations are getting a lot quicker. Like, I've noticed this year, like, in the years past, like, sometimes... You have slow days and fast days when it comes to the in and out of the roller coasters. But I feel like this year, like, crews are rocking and rolling. The one that stands out to me is Loch Ness because Loch Ness only has two trains. It can only run two trains. You can't, it's not like there's a third one in reserve. It only runs two trains. And they rock and roll that thing. Obviously, Griffin rocks and rolls. Pantheon's been pretty solid. And Apollo Chariot goes. So, I, you know, credit to Williamsburg's operations teams this year. They have been rocking and rolling as far as I'm concerned in my experience going many times over the past couple months. So speaking of which, that's talk about the rides and the roller coaster. So the ride selection is actually very similar at both parks, which is really cool. There's a lot of versions that Tampa has that Williamsburg got a upgraded version of and then vice versa. So they both have a screaming swing. Finnegan's Flyer is a little bit smaller than the Serengeti Flyer. It's, it doesn't have as many seats, but it does the same thing. I think the Serengeti one kind of went a little farther on the swings, which was really cool. The Serengeti one is like in the middle of an open field, no shade. So if you're on a hot day, you burn. I think Williamsburg has a lot more shade than Tampa does. That's just like a small side note, but I think Busch Gardens, Williamsburg has a lot more shaded areas because you think about like Italy, Ireland, the Wild Reserve area, Loch Ness Monster down in that area. Like there's a lot of more areas to cool off in Williamsburg than there is Tampa. There's not as many trees around because like I said, it's in a street corner. It's not built into this natural world. So there's obviously the elephant in the room, Iron Gwazi, one of the best coasters I've ever ridden in my life. And I'm praying, praying, Busch Gardens Williamsburg can get an RMC coaster like Iron Gwazi one day. Obviously, there's a lot of hoops that have to be jumped through. I hope, I know it's on the table because it was there at the member town hall. They wouldn't put an RMC coaster in there if they weren't thinking about it. Think about it. They have very similar rides. They both got log flume. They both got a rapid drive. They don't have a Pompeii though. They got a pretty similar route, but they don't have Pompeii. Like, we got Pompeii. Now, we have Dark Coaster and Verbolton. And the reason I mentioned those two is because those are rides with thematic indoor elements, or Dark Coaster's all indoor, neither of which Busch Gardens Tampa has any. Now, there is Cobra's Curse that has, I don't know exactly how you would define it, it kind of has some cool elements. I really like that style of coaster. I think Williamsburg would be really cool with that coaster because that kind of coaster doesn't take up a whole lot of space. It spins you around. It's kind of like the Omnimover coaster that they have for the Guardians Cosmic Rewind at Epcot and some of the new coasters that they're installing in Epic Universe. If Busch Gardens could get like one of those Omnimover coasters, kind of like Cobra's Curse, we didn't get an RMC. That would be like the new coaster I would love for us to get. That's like a little hope that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that I think you guys are like sleeping on. Busch Gardens Tampa also has Cheetah Hunt. I think Cheetah Hunt is a fantastic coaster. It's actually probably 
outside of Aranguazi, my favorite coast, that thing just goes. And it kind of, it, I didn't expect it to go as quick as it did. But oh my goodness, I, that ride and the way it intertwines with the world. And then you have, like I said, you have Montu, which is a not as good version of Alpengeist. Alpengeist is just so much, it's faster, smoother, is much better with the terrain, and I love it. Then you got Sheikra and Griffin. Griffin's better, Griffin's taller, Griffin's faster. Sheikra has, does have that the little tunnel that you go through. It's very quick, but I thought that was a cool touch, and I kind of wish Griffin had that touch. That's literally the only thing I got. Now, what's the big thing Busch Gardens Williamsburg has? A Pantheon, an Apollo's Chariot, and a Loch Ness Monster. Apollo's Chariot is kind of a legendary coaster. There's just no ride at Tampa that is like that. And Loch Ness Monster is the only coaster in the world with double interlocking loops. Obviously, Tampa doesn't have that. They also don't have a coaster that's built like that one. So, you know, go Loch Ness. And then Pantheon, obviously an intimate coaster that was the world's fastest multi-launch coaster. Busch Gardens Tampa doesn't have that, but they got Aranguazi, which is pretty cool. Now, Tampa is getting a new coaster known as Phoenix Rising, which is a family invert coaster. It's a new element that they get a new family coaster. Busch Gardens doesn't have one of those. We got Dark Coaster. So, SeaWorld is really trying to work on family rides, but we like the intense rides too. In my opinion, Busch Gardens Williamsburg takes the cake for roller coasters, because if you look at all the roller coasters, you, you look at the entire collection. Oh, forgot to mention, yes, Tigris, Tempesto, same ride. Roller coasters, I give it to Williamsburg, but Iron Gwazi really gives Tampa a fighting shot. Gwazi wasn't there, there's no competition, there's no consideration, there's no conversation, but because of Iron Gwazi, there's at least a conversation, but I think Busch Gardens Williamsburg takes the cake. And like for flat rides, neither park really has a lot, and that's always been kind of a crutch of both parks is that they don't really have a bunch of flat rides for the family, and they're kind of focused on family coasters. I think they need to kind of go on working on family flat rides. Like Busch Gardens just closed, Da Vinci's Cradle, Mock Tower. Hey, credit to you, Busch Gardens Tampa. You got Falcon's Fury. Does it break down a lot? Apparently, it was broken down while I was there. Wasn't surprised because, you know, Mock Tower. You still got your drop tower, so... Kudos to you. So hopefully it lasts longer than Mock Tower did. So rides and stuff, I give that to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now when it comes to the theming of the lands, I'm also going to give that to Williamsburg. Because Williamsburg is more integrated with the nature, the natural world, it just fits better. The Africa kind of theming, seeing the real world, it just kind of throws you off. The colors are very pretty. There were certain areas of the park that were just absolutely gorgeous. But I just think as a whole, there's so many different types of architecture and styles as you go through Williamsburg that they really sets it apart. And you really feel more integrated with these different countries in Williamsburg, than, in my opinion, than I did in Africa in uh, Busch Gardens Tampa. I didn't have time to see any shows at Busch Gardens Tampa, so I don't want to speak on that. They had some really beautiful theaters, so from what I saw, and their version of what seemed to be their version of the Fest House in the Globe were absolutely beautiful buildings, and I wish I had time to go see shows there, so can't really speak on shows. Now, what we're going to talk about now is the biggest elephant in the room outside of Iron Gwazi. Williamsburg has a great collection of animals with the Clyde sales, the sheep cows, the border collies, the wolves, the eagles, the owls, and the sheep. You can't compare. Tampa blows Williamsburg out of the water with their animal collection. I mean, you got the safari, you got the hyenas, the drafts, that you just walk to the side, is an orangutan just you know, climbing up its uh, tower. You look to your right, you got a tiger. You look over here, you got an elephant just swaying to the music. And you got the giraffes, the flamingos, you know, the armadillos. And that's just to name a few that you can see very easy without even going on like a trail or anything. And that's the crazy part because Bush Gardens Tampa is in that street corner. But when you get to the safari part, it's just like, it goes and goes with so many animals. And you're like, the whole place is a street corner, but yet somehow right here, it just goes out. But, you know, they take care of their animals, and I absolutely love the penguin little exhibit they got and the fish. It's undeniable. Tampa takes the cake. There's no real conversation. Williamsburg has very beautiful animals, but their collection is smaller because of Virginia's climate and Florida's climate, you know, works a lot more for a, a wider variety of animals. You know, Williamsburg, I love you, but Tampa just, I mean, leads you into dust when it comes to animals. But everyone's kind of in agreement of that. Tampa is always going to have better animals. Williamsburg is going to have better integration with the natural world. I feel like that's, in my opinion, a lot of the big things between Busch Gardens Tampa and Busch Gardens Williamsburg. But I will say, there's this feeling of Busch Gardens Tampa, which is just, it just feels like Busch Gardens. It feels like home even, it was my first time going, and it was for one day. When you walk into a Busch Gardens park, you feel like you're at home. 
and there were so many cool elements. There's so many things there that I wish Bush Gardens would embrace some, and there's a lot of things vice versa. I think I think Tampa could learn from Williamsburg. Just to see the two parks, you know, really continue to grow and build is exciting. I can't wait to go back and give it another shot, and then I can come back and make another one of these videos and see if my opinion stays the same as it is. Obviously, I'm biased. Williamsburg is my home park. Williamsburg is my favorite park. In my objective opinion, from my experience, Williamsburg is the better park, but it depends on what you're going for. This is not me trying to make a video saying Williamsburg is so much better than Tampa. I, in my opinion, it is just better. I want to know your opinion. What is your opinion about Busch Gardens Williamsburg versus Busch Gardens Tampa? Do you agree that Williamsburg is a better park or do you think Tampa is a better park? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Like I said, this is not an official rating. This is just me spitballing. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that bell button down below. So you notified every single time I upload a brand new video to the channel. Make sure to go stream my new single, Does She Know, wherever you listen to your music. Go check out the link in the comments down below and vote for me in the America's Next Top Hitmaker competition. Let's see if we can win this thing. And go check out the Patreon. An exclusive Patreon-only Bush Gardens vlog is coming out this Friday, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Will Morris, and I'm out. Peace. Does she know that she's alive?